Harnessing the magnetic field of the Earth for navigation dates back over a thousand years. Today, a modern form of magnetic navigation using small variations in the geomagnetic field shows promise as a viable alternative navigation system. Addressing one of the biggest challenges requires a data-driven approach, perfect for machine learning. Stay tuned to find out more. The use of GPS pervades both civilian and military travel over land, sea, and air. GPS uses a constellation of satellites to provide location information to receivers near Earth. While accurate and persistent, the signal power is very low, making it extremely susceptible to jamming and spoofing. GPS interruption occurs today. Just this week, Garmin experienced a service outage that made it impossible for fitness enthusiasts to track their workouts. It also made the Fly Garmin website, which provides support for commercial aviation navigational equipment unavailable. Magnetic navigation uses variations in the Earth's magnetic field to navigate. These variations, caused by magnetized regions in the crust of the Earth, known as magnetic anomalies, have, sig have significant spatial variation. With a map of the magnetic anomaly fields, Comparing a set of measurements with the map provides an estimate of position. This geolocation information can then be used to navigate, similar in concept to GPS. The magnetic field near the Earth has contributions from a number of sources. The core field originates from currents in the fluid core of the Earth and is the component most people are generally familiar with. The anomaly field, due to magnetized regions in the crust, is the part we wish to isolate for navigation. Space weather effects create currents in the magnetosphere and ionosphere. Finally, and most importantly, magnetic measurements taken on any platform will have a large contribution from the platform itself. The core field of the Earth accounts for over 90% of the geomagnetic field. Typical values are roughly 20 to 60 microtesla, or 100 times weaker than a refrigerator magnet. The core field varies in time, but models and measurements of these variations enable its removal for navigation purposes. The magnetic anomaly fields, or crustal fields, show significant spatial variation yet is stable on geologic timescales. The strength of the anomaly field varies by hundreds of nanotesla, making it much weaker than the core field. This requires sensitive magnetometers for mapping and navigation. Major Aaron Canciani has pioneered much of the work on magnetic navigation. He conducted a flight test to demonstrate magnetic navigation. Flying from the Pacific Ocean inland over Monterey Bay in California, Aaron's flight test used inertial and magnetic measurements to predict the aircraft location. The flight was conducted by Sander Geophysics Limited, a geosurvey company who also collected data for this challenge. Let's see how well it worked. In this video, the bottom pane shows the flight trajectory over the magnetic anomaly map created for the test. The flight is conducted at low altitude with a good map on a magnetically clean platform, ideal conditions for magnetic navigation. The upper pane shows the truth or GPS position in red, the green due to INS alone, and the black ellipse showing the magnetic navigation filter prediction. The video is sped up to play in real time. Over the first part of the flight, the horizontal filter error starts large, roughly a kilometer between the mean estimate and the true position. With more measurements, especially as the plane flies through larger variations in the anomaly fields, the error shrinks to hundreds of meters, then less than 100 meters. Notice the INS solution drifting away from the true position over time as inertial measurement errors compound. 
As the plane reaches the coast and continues to fly over land, where the, at fixed altitude it is closer to the crust, the magnetic, mag, the magnetic navigation error stays under 50 meters. Very impressive for a first demonstration and accurate enough for many scenarios. Transitioning the technology to an operational platform rests on four pillars. Magnetic navigation requires magnetic field sensors or magnetometers. The primary magnetometer is used to take measurements of the total field and secondary magnetometer is used for platform calibration. For the primary magnetometer, current generation scalar magnetometers are sensitive enough for magnetic navigation. The secondary magnetometer used for platform calibration must be a vector magnetometer, which measures the magnitude and direction, or all three spatial components of the magnetic field. This is especially important because the contributions from each source add as vector quantities, and the contributions from the platform depend on its orientation with respect to the Earth field. Magnetic maps do exist over much of the Earth, but vary greatly in resolution, accuracy, and true location registration. Algorithms such as the extended Kalman filter provide an accurate geolocation solution given a clean magnetic signal. This leaves pillar three, platform calibration, which is arguably the hardest technical challenge to overcome. Magnetic anomaly detection was originally used for submarine detection and geological surveys. The aircraft typically trails the magnetometer on a stinger or boom, providing standoff from the aircraft field sources. The planes are magnetically quiet and flown in a way that minimizes magnetic interference. A calibration procedure developed during World War II, known as Tolls Lawson after its inventors, requires flying a set of maneuvers designed to amplify the platform effects. Using a physics-based model, contributions from the permanent, induced, and eddy current fields of the aircraft are determined, and then subtracted from the total field. Operational platforms don't have the luxury of placing sensors in a stinger or boom, and have far more challenging environments with wires, equipment, and controls creating large magnetic fields. The goal of the challenge problem is to compensate for magnetic interference when the magnetometers are located inside the noisy aircraft. We anticipate that addressing this challenge will require a combination of physics and data-driven approaches, perfect for the scientific machine learning community. Be sure to check out the companion videos and talks describing the data set, challenge problem, and how to do SciML using Julia. A paper describing the challenge is available on the archive, where you can also find links to the GitHub repository with the data set and starter code.